to come in. Tiana, Virgo. Students, do we all have a program? Could you raise your hands if you do not have a program? Brown, I'm about. We are behind scheduled, scheduled. Ushers, quickly. Good morning, everyone. Guests, we are happy to have you joining with us in our 140th anniversary. It's really a pleasure to have you here with us. Um, we really didn't know that it would have been a reality, but we're giving God thanks this morning. Let us stand for the call to worship. We gather on this hilltop with shouts of joy and praise. Yes, we have gathered in thanksgiving for all these years. Let us sing a new song to God who has kept us strong. Let us sing with thanksgiving and the way to write our world. Lift up your heads and raise your voices in praise. Come, come clothed 
live in sincerity and dressed in truth and love. Let us now then worship. Worship God's holy name. High achievers in worship to Father, Spirit, Son. Together, let us celebrate our history and God's sovereignty as we enter in, into our 140th anniversary. Let us raise our voices in song as we celebrate, enter into Jerusalem. Enter into Jerusalem, let us go to God's house With the healthy and the sick, with the worker and the weak Let us go to God's house Enter into Jerusalem, let us go to God's house Come and run with the wind, with the God who reigns in peace Let us go to God's, we go celebrate We go celebrate We go celebrate Israel. Praise the name of the Lord on high. Praise his name in song. Praise the Lord with a heavenly song. With a heavenly song. With a heavenly song. Praise the Lord. Enter into Jerusalem, make we walk adown there with the young and the old, with the little and the large. Make we walk adown there. Enter into Jerusalem, make we walk adown there. Sway into the breeze with the God who reigns in peace. Make we walk adown. We go celebrate. We go celebrate. We go celebrate. All is well. Praise the name of the Lord on high. Praise his name in song. Praise the Lord with a heavenly song. With a heavenly song. With a heavenly song. Praise the Lord. Enter into Jerusalem, let us go to God's house With your papa and your mama, with your uncle and your aunt Let us go to God's house Enter into Jerusalem, let us go to God's house Run and catch the breeze with the God who reigns in peace Let us go, we go celebrate we go celebrate all Israel. Praise the name of the Lord on high. Praise his name in song. Praise the Lord with a heavenly song. With a heavenly song. With a heavenly song. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We will have Tiana Virgo, a sixth form student, leading us in prayer. Please be seated. Let us pray. Dear righteous and heavenly Father, loving, caring, and kind, we thank you for the opportunity to gather in this fashion this morning. We thank you for good health and strength. We thank you for your continuous blessings upon our lives. We thank you for guiding us 
our school, staff, and students through 140 years of excellence. Thank you for 140 years of transformation, resilience, growth, and success. As we gather here today, we ask you to remind us that we wouldn't have made it this far if it wasn't for you. We ask that your presence will stay with us throughout the service as we leave the proceedings in your able hands. Cover us, guide us, and keep us. In your name I pray. We will now repeat the Lord's Prayer. Thank you very much, Tiana. At this point in time in our service, I invite Reverend Karen Curlew, Chairman of the Board of Trustees of Westwood High School for Girls, to give the welcome. In 1882, in the community of Stewart Town, perched on a hilltop, Westwood High School was born. Today, we celebrate 140 years of the faithful witness of Westwood High School in this community and its environs. As we celebrate, we are reminded of a partnership with a faithful God who calls us to labor in his vineyard from any walk of life, from any status, from any social standing or position. We also celebrate today the work of our forebears, the work of pioneers, the work of men and women who unceasingly worked to fulfill the calling to our mission for the benefit of young black girls. We are grateful for the support of many over the years, including the church, the Anglicans, the Baptists, the Methodists, and the United Church. We are grateful for the opportunity to respond to the God-given privilege to share in corporate worship in acknowledgement of the countless blessings of God, which has rendered us often in awe at what God continues to do for us at Westwood. I use this opportunity to extend a warm and hearty welcome to you who gather in physical and virtual space. To our liturgist, our leader of this worship service and principal of the Westwood High School, Ms. Karen Francis. To Honorable Marissa Dalrymple Philibert, Speaker of the House of Representatives and Member of Parliament, Southern Trelawney. Honorable Marsha Smith, State Minister in the Ministry of Finance and Public Service, Member of Parliament, Northeast St. Anne. Ms. Carleen Segree, Acting Regional Director, Ministry of Education, Region 3, members of the Board of Trustees, Mrs. Doreen Dietrich, President, Westwood Old Girls Association and Board Member, Mr. Clayton Hall, Deputy Secretary General, Member Services and Industrial Relations, Jamaica Teachers Association, members of staff, academic, administrative and ancillary staff, parents, and uh, students of Westwood High, guests, friends all, welcome. Whether you are here with us at Westwood or joining us virtually, it is our hope that this time shared with one another will be a tremendous blessing for all of us. As we celebrate together, I ask you all to stay tuned to the channels through which invitations will be extended to you to join us in the many activities planned throughout the year as a part of our anniversary program. May the gift of God's love and grace continue to uphold us. Ora et labora, by prayer and by work.
Thank you very much, Reverend Curlew. We join our voices together again as we stand and sing, Great is Thy Faithfulness. I invite Mrs. Rochelle Parkinson Henry to come again to lead us. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not as thou hast been thou forever wilt be great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness morning by morning new mercies i see all i have need thy hand hath provided great is thy faithfulness lord to me summer and winter and springtime and harvest sun moon and stars in their courses above join with all manifold witness to thy great faithfulness mercy and love great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness. Lord, unto pardon for sin, pardon for sin, and a peace that endureth thine own dear presence to share and to guide. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with ten thousand besides. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness morning by morning new mercies I see all I have needed thy hand hath provided 
Indeed, God has been faithful to Westwood. At this time, we invite our brothers from Calabar High School to join with us. They're going to favor us with an item. Calabar High School, and as you all know, Calabar is our brother school.
Wonderful. Mr. Messias and Miss, Mr. Miss Mitchell and Miss, Miss Walker, Mr. Mitchell, fantastic work. May I tell you that they learned all of this online? So that deserves another round of applause. Thank you very much, Calabar. At this point in time, I will invite Honorable Marissa Dalrymple Philibert, Member of Parliament, Southern Trelawney, and Speaker of the House of Representatives, to bring greetings. And I will tell you that she's also an old girl. <clears throat> Principal of Westwood High School and liturgist for this anniversary service this morning, Miss Karen Francis, Chairman of our Board of Trustees, Reverend Carleen Curlew, Mrs. Doreen Diedrich. President of the Westwood Old Girls Association, Miss Carleen Segree, Regional Director of the Ministry of Education, Region 3, Mr. Clayton Hall, Jamaica Teachers Association, students present here with us, students joining us virtually, distinguished guests, and of course, my dear friend, they said those closest to you, you leave for last or somehow take for granted. I don't take you for granted. Miss Marsha Smith, who is the state minister um, in the Ministry of Finance and a very proud past student also of Westwood High School. Good morning. I am pleased that Miss Francis said that I'm a past student of Westwood because when she asked me to bring greetings as a member of parliament from South Trelawney, I thought about it and I smiled because of far greater importance to me is my association with my dear school Westwood as a past student, an institution which remains nestled in the hills of South Trelawney after 150 40 years. For me, one of the most significant facts connected with this anniversary is that after 140 years, notwithstanding the expansion of the physical plant, the enormous increase in the school population and profound changes in so many areas, there are principles and standards that have remained constant throughout these 140 years. Principles that have been ingrained in the lives of all of us by successive headmistresses, teachers, and members of the ancillary staff. Indeed, this morning, even as we as past students admit how much these principles have meant to us and guided us in our lives, we are assured that they will continue to guide the lives of you students who are present here and those of generations to come. Here at Westwood, we learned that every right carries with it a responsibility and every opportunity an obligation. We were taught the dignity of labor whether with our minds or with our hands. We were taught to be gracious and never forget to say thank you. 
we were taught the importance of speaking the truth and that honesty was always the best policy. We were taught that character, not wealth, not power or position, is what is important and of supreme worth in this life. We were taught always to believe in God and to worship with reverence and truth. We were taught to share with each other as students and that love is the greatest thing in the world. Love alone overcomes hate, creates peace and harmony, and that right will always triumph over might. As we gather this morning to celebrate the years, we recognize as life goes that great and eminent people have monuments built out, created out of bronze and marble and set up in prominent places all over the world. But for those of us who have been to Westwood, have been the beneficiaries. And for all those who have served us here, and those who are still serving, we want you to be assured that you are truly enshrined in the hearts of so many of us. And we thank you and pay tribute to you all this morning. For those who have departed this life, we acknowledge that the sun that once warmed and brightened our lives has now set. And we are grateful for your contribution to these 140 years here at Westwood. For those who have physically left school but continue in so many ways to contribute to the life of our school and students, we say thanks and ask for God's continued guidance in your life. To our present headmistress, Miss Karen Francis, at the helm of this school after 140 years, and in very challenging times, we say thank you for being the phenomenal woman that you are. For getting the job done and keeping the flag of Westwood flying high. And for doing so without ever seeming to have your head bowed low or having even to speak loudly. Miss Francis, we salute you to your teaching and your ancillary staff for keeping the wheels running efficiently and continuing to inspire the lives of this present generation generation or grateful thanks to you. Indeed, this morning, after 140 years, generations to come will rise up and call you blessed. This morning I bring greetings as a past student and as a member of parliament for the constituency in which my school stands. I salute all who have guided this institution over 140 years. I salute all students, past and present, and ask for God's continued guidance as our school continues to chart the path for yet another 140 years. Truly, great is thy faithfulness. O oh God, my Father, there is no turning of shadow with thee. Thou changest not. Thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, 
thou wilt ever be. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Dalrymple Philibert. At this point in time, we will have Ms. Carlene Segree, Regional Director Acting, Ministry of Education, Region 3, who is also an old girl. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Principal Ms. Karen Francis and liturgist for this morning's event. Good morning. Members of the Board of Management, led by the very distinguished Reverend Karen Curlew. Let me greet the Honorable Mrs. Marissa Delrymple Philibert, Member of Parliament for South Trelawney and Speaker of the House of Representatives. The pleasure is mine to greet the Honorable Marcia Smith, Minister of State in the Ministry of Finance. Let me greet Mrs. Doreen Diedrich, President of the Westwood Old Girls Association and all the other distinguished past students and those who are members of WOGA. Pardon me if I must extend special greeting to the class of 1987 to 1992, the class to which I belong. Let me extend heartiest greetings to the lone male on the program, Mr. Clayton Hall, Deputy Secretary General member services and industrial relations at the Jamaica Teachers Association. I wish to greet Miss Carolyn Sinclair, principal of the Parent Teachers Association. Let me also greet all teachers, members of faculty, students, those present and those online and those in the diaspora. I wish to also greet our friends from the Calabar High School, or sister or brother school. You, we are your sisters. We greet you well, and uh, we look forward to hearing from you again if you're also on the program to present another time. As I watched the virtual tour of the noble institution that Ms. Francis sent to me, I became awashed with deep emotions, and nostalgia, but mostly a feeling of pride and success. This institution represents nobility in its truest form, standing up to the test of times, demonstrating significant fortitude, resilience, determination, and growth which beautifully culminates into a fine product of all round institutional effectiveness and success in student attainment and the teacher efficacy. For this, the Minister of Education, the Honorable Mrs. Favel Williams, congratulates this institution in celebration of 140 years of ongoing and continued success. As we celebrate with you, and I celebrate with you as a past student, which I'm proud to be, I wish to urge us though towards further expanding learning opportunities and experiences to our ladies in the field of technology and innovation, as this is where the world is going. We are forging into the era of the fourth industrial revolution. As an institution of 140 years, we have a head start in this race 
towards all-round success at all levels, academic, personal, and social development through the emphasis on the multiple intelligences and building strength of character in our ladies. So as I greet you on this auspicious occasion, I wish to challenge us to take it to the next level. I wish to encourage the development of these young minds who sit before us towards creating glass ceilings so they do not have to break them because they would have created them in leadership and innovations by focusing new energies in these areas. This will enable the further igniting of the trail that past students, such as Mrs. Philibert and Ms. Smith, have blazed and to continue blazing so that the name Westwood High School for Girls in Trelawney will loom even larger on the Jamaican and international landscape. Principal Francis, Madame Board Chairman, Reverend Curlew, members of faculty, members of the administrative staff and the ancillary staff, we congratulate you from the Ministry of Education and we thank you for the role you play in ensuring the continued success of this great institution. I also use this opportunity to pay homage to other distinguished ladies who served as principal since the inception, and in particular those who served while we were here, Marsha, <laughs> Mrs. Eileen Pigott, Miss Etta Whiteman, Mrs. Ivan Logan. Acknowledgements to the members of the Board of Management who provide sterling service and excellent leadership over the years. I am truly honored and blessed to be a part of this day in history. Congratulations to the Westwood High School for 140 glorious years. And we know that all the years were not easy. I remember when the roof of this auditorium blew off, flew off during Hurricane Gilbert, but we pressed on, we continued on, and today we are here to celebrate 140 years of success. Ladies, students, I borrow the words from the narrator in the video. The indomitable, prestigious, remarkable, and outstanding. We pay tribute to the Westwood High School, Ora et Labore. Thank you. I'd like to thank Ms. Sigree, our past student and regional director acting for that greetings. At this point in time, I'm going to invite Honorable Marsha Smith, State Minister in the Ministry of Finance and Public Service to favor us with an item. Good morning.
Thank you very much, Honorable Marsha. It felt, I, I felt angels here. Yes, to God be the glory. We are going to now invite Mrs. Doreen Dijic, president of the Westwood All Girls Association to bring greetings. Yes, I'm still recovering from the goosebumps that came all over me. Liturgist, Miss Karen Francis, our principal. Chairman of the Board of Trustees, 
Reverend Karen Curlew, Honorable Marissa Dalrymple Filbert, Member of Parliament for South Trelawney and Speaker of the House of Representatives, and an old girl, Honorable Marcia Smith, State Minister in the Ministry of Finance and the Public Service, and an old girl, Miss Carlene Sigri, Regional Director Acting, the Ministry of Education, Region 3, an old girl, Mr. Clayton Hall, Deputy General Secretary, Member Services and Industrial Relations, Jamaica Teachers Association, Miss Carolyn Sinclair, President of the Parent Teachers Association, and an old girl. Teachers, administrators, ancillary staff, alumni all over the world, students, well-wishers, friends, stakeholders, and all those watching in the virtual space. I greet you this morning on behalf of the Westwood Old Girls Association, the chapter here, the chapter in New York, and the chapter in South Florida. I stand tall today as a privileged alumna of this noble institution, Westwood High School for Girls. Being a boarding school, this was a place that was home away from home for several years for many of us. We are eternally grateful to our school leaders, including our principals and teachers, who instilled in us the values and discipline that have been the hallmark of this institution over these 140 years. This has stayed with us throughout the various chapters of our lives, allowing us to portray the high qualities and standards that Westwood ladies are known for. We pay homage to our founder, Reverend William Menzi Webb, and co-founders, Reverend Henderson and Mrs. Trestrail, who were led by God to establish a school for girls, regardless of color, class, or creed. The trust that was established in 1898 with the four church denominations, the Anglican, the, Beth, um, the Baptist, the Methodist, and the United Church, carved the path for the establishment of good Christian principles and morals that have guided us over these years. We are proud that our alma mater has continued to embrace these sound principles and has maintained high academic standards and good moral values that have positioned Westwood as one of the leading all-girls schools in Jamaica and in the Caribbean. Our 135th anniversary in 2017 was marred by a fire that ravaged our dining room and kitchen. Our 140th anniversary is threatened by a pandemic caused by the COVID-19 virus that has disrupted Westwood's experience of boarding and resulted in teaching and learning being transferred to an online platform. Several events planned for the anniversary have also had to be scaled down as we observe the protocols associated with the pandemic. I implore all old girls to consider the great value that Westwood has added to our lives. 
which has allowed us to excel in our various fields of work and to become who we are. I ask you to make a renewed commitment to support those who will come after us. The need for support is even greater now as our school and the students have been negatively affected by the pandemic. Boarding life as we knew it, which has been the focal point of the Westwood experience, resulting in that great bond of sisterhood and friendship many of us experienced and have maintained throughout our lives may never be the same. Westwood has overcome many adversities over these 140 years. And we will not be distracted by the challenges that we face, but with the resilience and, then, and that indomitable spirit that we are known to possess, we will press on to greater heights and so embrace our motto, Ora et Labore, by prayer and by work. Hats off westward to 140 years of transformation, resilience, growth, and success. May God bless Westwood and all of us who continue to support this great institution. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Diedrich. We continue with our greetings as we invite Mr. Clayton Hall, Deputy Secretary General, Member Services and Industrial Relations, Jamaica Teachers Association. Mr. Hall, welcome. Madam Principal, and liturgist, Reverend Karen Curlow, Chairman of the Board of Trustees, Old Girl. The Honorable Marissa Dalrymple Filbert, Member of Parliament and Speaker of the House of Representatives, Old Girl. The Honorable Marsha Smith, State Minister in the Ministry of Finance, Old girl. Miss Carleen Segree, Regional Director acting for the Ministry of Education, Region 3, Old Girl. Mrs. Doreen Dietrich, President of Westwood Old Girls Association, Old Girl. I greet you in the name of my president, Mr. Winston Smith. And I indicate to all in the sound of my hearing that Mr. Smith is at this point bemoaning the fact that he asked me to represent him, considering that I am the only male on this program. It was my desire, it was my intent to adopt the protocol already established, but I could not miss the opportunity to call my friends old girls. If I do it any other time, I will be severely punished. But today is an exception. Madam Dalrymple Filbert, today is an exception. Ladies and gentlemen, 140 years of existence, but not just existence, contribution to no other facet of life but education. One of the most quoted Bible, one of the most quoted verses in the Bible comes from Psalm 118. You would have heard it quoted twice today. But my favorite comes just before it. It says, this is the Lord's work, and it is marvelous in our eyes. 141 years ago, Westwood High School was just a dream. And that vision led to the creation of an organization which would have 
realized the dreams of countless numbers of females across Jamaica and the world. As, a, as an expert mathematician, I have made the calculations of the number of persons whose lives have been positively impacted by Westwood in over 140 years. And after doing that and allowing for the adjustments for, for, for population and so forth, I have arrived at a number. And that number in English is plenty. If it is recalibrated to Patwa, it will be enough. Colleagues, the fact that this institution can boast two prominent members of government, the director for the Regional Education Services Region 3, and countless other Jamaicans online and in the diaspora, it shows that commendations must be given to this institution. And on behalf of the Jamaica Teachers Association, our president, Mr. Winston Smith, our president-elect, Mrs. Lasonia Harrison, and our immediate past president, Mr. Jasford Gabriel, and the general council and members of the Jamaica Teachers Association, it is my esteemed pleasure to greet you on this auspicious occasion. I will leave you with the memory from Mr. Charleston. He said, education is simply the soul of society as it passes from one generation to the other. In this room, reflected is the generations of educators and persons benefiting from education over many years. We are now sowing the seeds for the future. And in another 140 years, our predecessors will say it was good that Westwood came and contributed. Have a beautiful day. Thank you very much, Mr. Hall. At this time, I'm going to invite Anika Spence, a grade 11 student, to share a poem that she has written with, um, with us. Anika? Continue rise, no, we never look down. 
Walk confidently with the hat as we crown. Back to being a young lady. Modest attire, speaking properly with God. As our guide, everything will be fine. Dependent on his grace and we do it with pride. Back to being a young lady. Modest attire, speaking properly with God. As our guide, everything will be fine. Dependent on his grace and we do it with pride. 140 years and we still stand strong. 140 years of transformation from 1882. Are we been a rule now at 2022 when we had the top school? Kitchen was burnt, flat to the ground. COVID broke loose, but we mind still sound. We continue rise, no, we never look down. Walk confidently with the hat as our crown. Continue rise, we never look down. Walk confidently with the hat as we crown. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anika. I see that that one resonated with you. We're going to now receive the offering and having celebrated or we are celebrating 140 years. So we're giving God thanks and we have special projects that we would like to achieve and to do this year. So I'm inviting you to um, give generously to the offering. Yes. Uh, just uh, we're going to ask Mr. Townsend to uh, play while we collect the offering, and then Calabar will do their item. Okay. All right. So the ushers, are you? I've not seen you. Where are you, ushers? Yes. Could you start at the front, please? Mm
You may come, ushers. Please stand. We're just waiting on one person. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the offering that has been collected. We ask, Lord God, that it may be used for the development of Westwood High School for Girls. We thank you, Lord God, for those who gave. And we also ask, Lord God, that you will bless them continuously. Father, accept our offering and accept our praise in this, our 140th anniversary year. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, ladies. We are going to listen to the word of God, which comes to us from Psalm 100, reading from verse 1 through to 5. And this will be read by Mr. Lassels Gabidon, one of our vice principals. After which, we will have our selection by the school choir. So I'm going to ask that the choir get ready. And sir, I invite you now to read the first lesson. Please pardon me. I'm sorry, I almost forgot. Josh Michael Rose, who is going to be on clarinet. Josh Michael Rose from Calabar, please come.
Thank you very much, Josh Michael. And to believe I almost omitted your piece. Please pardon me, sir. Um, great musical items from Calabar. And just to say that our music teacher went to Calabar. Yes. As I said earlier, we will be having our lesson, our first lesson, and Mr. Lassas Gabidon, our vice principal, will read that lesson for us. Yes, I can put it on this part. Our first lesson comes to us from Psalm 100, and I will be reading from the New International Version. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name, for the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Thank you very much, Mr. Gavidon. I now invite the school choir to come on stage and they will favor us with an item, Still I Rise.
we will have the second lesson, which comes to us from Ezekiel chapter 37, reading from verse 1 through to 14. And this will be read by Tiana Brown, our student council president. The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones, and say to them, Dry bones, hear the words of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you, and make flesh come upon you, and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you, and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, breath from the four winds, and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them, and they came to life and stood upon their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say our bones are dried up, and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says, My people, I am going to open your graves, and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you, and you will live, and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I have done it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you very much, Tiana. We will stand for the gospel, which comes to us from Mark chapter 2, reading from verse 1 through 12. And this will be read by Miss Christina Hudson, a teacher and old girl. Our third lesson comes to us from Mark 2, reading from verses 1 to 12, and I'll be reading from the New International Version. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. They gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. Some men came, bringing to him a paralyzed man carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and then lowered the mat with the man on it. When Jesus saw, the, when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, son, your sins are forgiven. Now some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately, Jesus knew in his spirit that this was what they were thinking in their hearts. And he said to them, why are you thinking these things? Which is easier, 
to say to this paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up, take your mat, and walk. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. He got up, took his mat, and walked out in full view of them all. This amazed everyone, and they praised God, saying, we have never seen anything like this. Here endeth a portion of God's word. We honor it by saying, thanks. Thank you very much, Ms. Hudson. As we prepare our hearts to receive the message, I'm going to invite Nurse Desiree Mackenzie Ray to favor us with a song. She's also an old girl. Good, is it morning now or afternoon? Whatever it is, hello everyone. I greet you well, um, and I just want to say hello to all persons who are here present in person, as well as those who are viewing on cyberspace. I stand here with great pride and joy. Uh, it is indeed an honor to be able to return to my alma mater and serve, um, I'm currently the school nurse, at such a time as this. Congratulations, Westwood High School, 140 years strong. We owe it all to the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. May his name continue to resound in our hearts and at this very noble institution. Sean. 
of Jesus and praise His name forevermore. The name is Jesus. Oh, how I love Him, the one who gave His life for me. Be So unconditional, I will have life eternally. Praise the name, praise the name, praise the name. Thank you very much, Nurse Desiree, for that beautiful rendition. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, Akiva. Reverend Karen Curlew is our chairman of the board. She is former president of the Jamaica Baptist Union, first woman to have achieved that feat. She holds the command of distinction. Reverend Curlew is presently the Baptist warden at the UTCWI. She's the mother of one son, and wife to one husband. <laughs> She's a great speaker, excellent leader. And this morning, I invite Reverend Karen Francis Curlew. I just had to do that. Yes, she was Karen Francis. To lead us in this aspect to share what the Lord has laid on our heart this morning. Reverend Curlew, it's a pleasure to have you here with us this morning. Thank you so much, Madam Liturgist, Principal Miss Francis. Friends, there are those who enter our lives and make significant contribution during the course of our lives. The family of Westwood is no exception to this. And I have waited until this time to single out some persons, especially some of these persons. I want to specially acknowledge Calabar High School, our brother school, and who we enjoy or with whom we enjoy a similar legacy. For they too, when founded, was not only for sons of Baptist ministers, but for the less fortunate black boys, 30 years after the founding of Westwood High. And Calabar, those of you who are here representing the school, today you embarked upon a long journey to be with us as a reminder of our partnership with you. Can we make again special acknowledgement of Calabar? 
I would also like to acknowledge, in a special way, our Parent Teachers Association. Parents and teachers, well, parent, the PTA is what I would say, usually led by a parent, and currently our PTA is being led by Miss Carolyn Sinclair, who will participate in this worship experience a little later on. Miss Sinclair, where are you? The PTA, she's had an emergency, we are being told. But the PTA, I have singled out because the PTA is usually active in ensuring that our standards are maintained. And we know that it is never an easy task for our teachers nor for our parents to do this. And we appreciate you, parents and teachers. I want to also make a special acknowledgement of our own students, our young ladies from the lower and the upper school. Our boarders are here. I want to acknowledge you because you are here toiling away, toiling hard. And it's not everything you will understand about why you're doing what you're doing, but as you have heard from these old girls, it does pay, pay off in the, in the long run. So students, our young ladies here at Westwood, we salute you in particular today, and we acknowledge you in a special way. I consider it an honor for me to be sharing with you in this celebration of 140 years of this noble and a great institution nestled in the hills of Southern Trelawney, Westwood High School. I want to tell you a story. It is a story read from the Gospel of Mark. It is a story of Jesus forgiving and healing a man unable to walk, a paralyzed man. Jesus, the Christ, God's son, was effecting his ministry of preaching, healing, and teaching. And while he was doing this, he was attracting large crowds. So on a particular day and in a particular place called Capernaum, the people there had heard that Jesus would be there preaching a word. So they gathered at the house or in the building, in the space where Jesus would be. They gathered in large numbers. It was a house packed with people. It was crowded inside. It was crowded by the entrance, by the door. But there was one man somewhere around who somehow ignited the concern of others. He was paralyzed. He, he couldn't walk. His paralysis helped some men to decide that they would bring him to Jesus for they couldn't take him to Jesus by walking through the crowd or walking to the door. So packed was this place, this building. So what they did was that they cut through the roof of the building and then lowered the mat the man was lying on so he could be within Jesus' reach. When Jesus see him, Jesus does a few things, including pronouncing his sins forgiven. And at that time, as Jesus makes that pronouncement that this man's sins had been forgiven, the teachers of the law accuse him of blasphemy, the same charge that would lead him, Jesus, being handed over for execution later on. But to this charge, Jesus issues a challenge. And Jesus again speaks to the man with an instruction to take up his mat and go home. When you look at this story, in particular ways this morning, and as we do that, let us be asking ourselves, what does this mean for us at Westwood today, even as we celebrate 140 years? I want to say this to us, that at some point, we need to pause, to pause for reflection. Pause for reflection. 
Now listen, friends. Acting on the faith of the men who carried the paralyzed man to Jesus, acting on their faith, Jesus forgives the man of his sins and then sends him on his way with his bed, or with his bedroll, as some would say, or with his mat. Now, this is a detail that the gospel writer includes as Jesus is presented in the gospel of Mark as savior, as redeemer, as liberator, the one who came to earth to redeem humanity from sin. So forgiveness of sins is redeeming and the healing also frees the man to go about his business in ways that he could not have otherwise done, but to take with him at least for now that which would remind him of where he was coming from. Do you remember where you come from? Do we remember where we here at Westwood have come from? Can we bring the testimony of where we come from with us where, wherever we go? But in keeping with our focus today, let me be more specific, though. Have we brought the testimony, Madam Principal, of where Westwood has come from with us now? Since 1882, this noble institution sitting on a hilltop has shaped and molded the lives of young ladies in preparation for the world at large. The testimony is that in post-emancipation Jamaica, Westwood was born out of a concern for unsegregated education for young girls at that time. And we're grateful for the vision of Baptist minister, Reverend William Menzi Webb, and those who helped him realize this vision, Reverend George Henderson, Mrs. Trestrail, a vision born out of rejection as well as a vision born out of objection due to color and class. But Reverend Webb and his wife, Georgina Louise, they knew what unsegregated education would mean. For they, along with a Presbyterian minister, had registered their daughters at a school for girls in Falmouth, but others objected to them being a part of the school. And when the sisters who founded that school refused to dismiss the two girls, the parents withdrew their daughters, forcing a temporary closure of the school. Let us not forget where we come from. Or stop and reflect. Pause for reflection. For doesn't this mean something for our own lives as well? That in reflecting on where we have come from, the challenges and, and crises we have endured will come to mind. And some we certainly prefer to forget. Our reflection may reveal anxieties. It may reveal some weaknesses, but also our strengths as well. Our reflection is useful for the present, and it is useful for the future. It allows us to think of what we need to do differently or better. It allows us to think of which traditions we need to hold on to, of what new vision to realize. It helps us to make sense of our experience, to bring greater clarity to our experiences. It allows us to be honest with who we are and honest about the experiences that have contributed to who we are today and some would prefer to forget let us pause for reflection let us remember Westwood where we have come from and it also helps us to better develop and apply new strategies and approaches to our tasks for some of us Reflection on our past brings us to say that I used to be this way and now I am this way. So we draw contrasts and we make comparisons with the stages through which we have gone in our lives. And we also draw some conclusions that having gone through the particular stages or particular events or particular situations, we are now able to assess and to value the processes. For these processes have resulted in our transformation, our resilience, our growth and success. That's our theme celebrating 140 years, transformation, resilience, growth and success. Sometimes we shy away from thinking back 
because it may distract where our lives are positioned now in terms of maintaining a particular status. We don't want to think back. We don't want to remember where we come from because it poses a distraction in terms of where we are now. And for many of us, maintaining a particular status becomes our life's goal. And in the process, we forget human need and forget that it is because someone else was interested in our needs why we are where we are today. Our reflections must also lead us to acknowledge the opportunities that God in Jesus has given us. The opportunity to see life from refreshing viewpoints and perspectives. The opportunity to appreciate the faithfulness of God, for our God has been faithful. The opportunity to invest some more in our God-given creativity. The opportunity to see God at work in our lives, blessing us over and over and over again. And it is for this reason we come today within the confines and spaces of this gathering to reflect on a faithful, loving and redeeming God who in Jesus Christ is demonstrating yet again that he is interested in us and he's certainly concerned about us. Jesus said to the man, now healed from his paralysis, take up your mat and walk. Can we bring the testimony, friends, of where we are coming from with us wherever we go. Let us not forget the journey since 1882, a journey of growth and success, a journey of resilience and transformation, but a journey that emerged from rejection and opposition, from challenge and crisis. What a journey it has been, a journey that we must not forget, a journey that elevated human need over and above maintaining the status quo and the social order. Today, Westwood High stands tall at the top of the hill as an institution of transformation, resilience, growth, and success. And we thank God today for what God has enabled in the life of Westwood for 140 years. We celebrate the achievements and the accomplishments. Yes, we do. But we also celebrate God's faithfulness, for God has journeyed with us over these many years, and we are confident that God will continue to journey with us at Westwood High. Can we pause to remember? Can we find some time to stop and think? In the midst of our studies, in the midst of our work, in the midst of our going about our business on a daily basis, about where we have come from. Pause for reflection. But after reflecting, after reflection, then what? Let us engage one another in conversation, in discussion. Let us have a conversation in our board meetings, our staff meetings, our development seminars, in our classes, in our PTA meetings. Let us share our stories with one another, pooling the lessons we have learned from the testimonies that we share so that our conversations will not be replete with wanting to preserve and order, but will be more interested in human need, more interested in wholeness and acceptance, sustenance, so that our conversations will be more interested not in maintaining status quo or not in having certain positions, but will be more interested in the preservation of lives, especially at this time of great uncertainty and trial. Like the religious authorities of Jesus' day, it is easy to have conversations around who is maintaining status or, or not, especially when one's personal intentions and personal desires for self-gratification are what instructs how one approaches his or her living. Human need is often forgotten. Jesus says, no, not so. And you know what happened when Jesus said no? His refusal to do this breeds hostility and contempt oppression and rejection for he's challenging the boundaries at every turn. Read the story in the gospel. The point Jesus is making is that God's will for humanity, God's vision for humanity is for wholeness, is for redemption, is for justice. I'm asking us this, whether you have joined us physically or in the virtual space, can our conversations here at Westwood be done within a network of mutuality? In very recent times, the Board of Trustees has been having discussions as to how this may be done. 
as to how a shared existence will shape living in community and engender meaningful partnerships. And yes, our discussions are shaped by a vision of new things. This does not mean doing away with tradition. For tradition instructs us and informs us and tradition assists us with decision making. But our discussions now will have to subvert certain boundaries that are already in place. What is the focal point of these conversations? What is the focal point of these discussions that we ought to have? It is serving human need. That's the example of Jesus in the story. This is the story of Jesus. For you see, my friends, the world's present order is not built around serving human need, but the world's present order is built around domination and drawing clear boundaries between insiders and outsiders to preserve power and status. So human need, serving human need, no cut, no dash. Doesn't get people interested, it's not appealing. It's about maintaining social order and maintaining a position, having a position, maintaining the status quo. So living in the way Jesus does and living in the way Jesus calls his followers to do will inevitably lead to conflict with these powers. The founders of this great institution, they were not about maintaining status quo, but they were about subverting the establishment that failed to respond to the needs of these young girls. Controversy, conflict, hostility, all of that emerged, but those responsible stood their ground. And today, we are grateful for them, to them, for holding their principles, and we are grateful to Almighty God for arming them with the power to do so. Let us have the conversations, if not already begun. Let us continue the conversations, if we have begun them. It is responding to human need that we are about. So what we do, we do for the good of humanity. We want our girls to be better. We want them to have the right and proper access to learning. We want our teachers to have their tools for instruction. We want a community where we build up one another, where we are partners together, not just partners with affiliates or with outsiders who are interested in us. We want a community where we are partners on the inside, where our partnership speaks volumes about the life we live together. We want a community where we will dig through the obstacles together like the four men in the story for the sake of one another. We want a community that loves each other, that learns together, that shares together, and that trusts in one another. Listen now. You see, this world in which we are living, it's all about maintaining established boundaries at the expense of human need. Jesus tells those who have a problem with what he's doing, that this is not how it is done. So let us have the conversation. Let us have the conversation where humanity takes precedence, where the betterment of lives are being shaped for the world, the betterment of lives being offered to those who are being shaped for the world. And I tell you this today, that true and real development takes place when human need is attended to. This is Jesus' point. So the teachers of the law, they could quarrel all they want because they had authority. And Jesus presents an opportunity to live more responsively to the mysterious grace of God in creation. Even when others feel threatened, are we willing to take those risks here at Westwood? Those of us in our different groups and in our different meetings, Teachers with your students, the student councils among yourselves, whoever we are, are we willing to do this? An opportunity to live more responsively to the mysterious grace of God. That same grace, divine grace, which the prophet Ezekiel seems to have in mind, for it was upon God's initiative that the whole human enterprise came into being. Can't we have the discussions? We certainly must, so that we here at Westwood will be able to embody the claim of a quality of life which proclaims God's goodness, God's faithfulness for all creation. Stop a minute for reflection. And then after reflection, let's, let's come together for conversation. 
And then after conversation, then what? It's time for action. It's time for action. Transformation, resilience, growth and success are the result of continued and deliberate action. How do we now appropriate Jesus' teaching in the context of our lives, especially today, in the context of our lives at Westwood? You know, friends, this is a hard one. But self-denial is a part of the action that we will take. Self-denial. And the call to deny self brings with it the notion of how easy it is to be consumed by self. The call to deny self assumes how easy it is to promote our selfish ways. That we must move away from self-interests and from our self-serving ways. By our sacrifice, sacrificing of our time and our gifts and our resources. That we give and we give some more. Even when you find yourself constrained and facing the severity of the challenge, still give. And I know at times like these, when we talk about giving, especially at a moment like this, you might be saying, what the preacher asking us to give money when time's so hard? What is to give of our resources? Not just our financial resources. But the resources of our time. The resources of our gifts. Our giving will ensure that our borders are fed. That our students and teachers are equipped for learning and study and for teaching. Our giving will ensure that basic amenities are in place and are operating. Our giving will ensure that the fundraisers bear fruit and that they play a big part in enriching the lives of the community we serve here at Westwood. It's time for action. Action after conversation, then action. Another part of the action, another action we would take is to offer direction. For you see, friends, we are living in a world and nation where we are left to wonder if those who ought to be giving direction and proper leadership are forgetting what they ought to be, be representing and who they ought to be. We have the responsibility to act upon the conversations by being the moral compass. So many of our young people, many of our young girls specifically, have lost hope in systems and in the people who ought to be their, their moral or spiritual compass. We who should have offered the direction they need have, have failed them often and we know that they fuel the hopelessness they feel in ways which increase in some of them bitterness and, and anger which they feel. What other course of action will we take? Let us cross boundaries for the sake of the other. Crossing the boundaries. The gospel story is again in view. So we have to put self-preservation aside. Put self-preservation aside. It is self-preservation that is killing plans and projections. It is self-preservation that is affecting implementation of the plans. Self-preservation limits action. What action are we willing to take? The thing about people, you know, is that we want a new vision to be realized. We want a new thing to be done. We, we like new things. We like new things. Say yes, don't it? Say yes. Yes, we like new things. But the work to be done to acquire the new things is quite another matter. And we not just like new things. We like the shiny new things. Because shiny and new, look, look, look. It, it's attractive. It, it has appeal. But the actions to be taken to gain those is quite another matter. Action. Our forebears, Reverend Webb and others, they worked really hard to establish Westwood High School. The legacy of their hard work is what we reap today. They were consistent, they were constant and dedicated to taking action. They committed themselves to a task that was not impossible. No, it was not impossible but was seen as so by others who felt that their position and status were being threatened, but still they persevered, and we bear the fruit of their labor today. They were enlivened. 
by the life of God's Spirit moving and breathing in them. They were enlivened by the depth of insight and wisdom God's Spirit gave them. And even when there may have been times they were rendered helpless or lifeless, they no doubt remember the assurances of the prophet Ezekiel that God would once again breathe new life into them and raise them up to respond to his will for humanity. So we hear the challenge in Ezekiel, Ezekiel 37. Take action. It's time for dry bones to come to life. You know the dry bone song? Toe bone connected to the foot bone. Foot bone connected to the heel bone. Now hear the word of the Lord. Them bones, them bones, them dry bones. Now hear the word of the Lord. Them bones, them bones gonna walk around. Them bones, them bones gonna rise again. Now hear the word of the Lord. It's time for action. We are in it together, we are stood. We are a community, a community of partners, celebrating our unity amongst diversity, learning to appreciate our differences and embracing our diverse gifts and perspectives. We are in it together. So if we have suspicions of others, we need to lay them aside and enjoy the way we who are members of Christ's body complement each other. For after all, we are laborers together in this part of the vineyard which God in Jesus Christ has placed us. Jesus' challenge is clear. Let us act with urgency and break down the barriers which are erected to violate the dignity and worth of others by those who misuse and abuse the power they have. Let us depend on the Spirit who gives us the life to act. After reflection, then conversation. After conversation, then what? Action. Will you respond to the challenge? Wherever you have joined us, in your homes, wherever you are, whether you're a student, parent, wherever you have come from, those who have shared with us in this worship experience, will you respond to the challenge? Will we respond collectively? Will we respond because something about the challenge impacts our personal lives as well? Remember the summons today, engage in reflection where we come from. How has that impacted who we are today as an institution, as individuals? Share our stories in conversation, charting the way ahead, embracing a new vision and a new reality. Then take action. It requires commitment, consistency, and constancy. Will you do that today? Whoever you are, wherever you are, thank God for 140 years of Westwood High School. We give God the glory, the honor, and the praise. And we salute all who have been a part of this great institution for 140 years. Walk good Westwood. Walk with God. Amen. Praise the Lord. What a message. Thank you very much, Rev. Action. Action. I'm going to invite Tessan McGee to come. Rev, may I invite you back to the podium, please? Yes. Reverend Crow, on behalf of the Westwood High School family, I would like to extend sincere gratitude to you for sharing your sermon with us today. We would love to share a piece of Westwood with you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Tessan and Rev. We hope that you will enjoy the gift and um, put that little girl on your... Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, we're going to now stand to sing, Now Thank We All Our God, and I invite Mrs. Henry to come uh, to be the cantor. Um, the message that Rev has shared with us, though we are freezing, today is really cold. The sermon has warmed our hearts, yes. Now thank we all our God. Now thank we all our God with hearts and hands and voices who wondrous things have done in whom his world rejoices who from our mother's arms hath blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love and still is ours today. Oh, may this bounteous God through all our life be near us with ever joyful hearts and blessed peace to cheer us and keep us in his grace and guide us when perplexed and free us from all ills in this world and the next. All praise and thanks to God, the Father now be given, the Son and Him who reigns, with them in highest heaven, the one eternal God, whom earth and heaven adore, for thus it was, is now, and shall be evermore. Please be seated. As was indicated earlier, Miss Carolyn Sinclair, she had an emergency this morning, and so we have asked Miss Minette Mills, one of our house mothers, along with Shoyani Smith, a sixth former, to lead us in the litany of Thanksgiving. Good afternoon, everyone. God of our past, we gather today to give thanks for the past. We remember those who first had a vision of a school on this hill. We give thanks for those who put their names on a loan and gave to the trust, for those who gave their labor their treasure, and their time, so that this vision could come to pass. As we remember the efforts of the founders and builders, we offer words of thanks and praise. God of growth, we remember too those who helped the school to grow in wisdom, faith, and knowledge. We think of the education system, board members, principals, teachers, 
parents, administrative staff, house mothers, ancillary workers, old girls, student leaders, and many others who provided leadership and the governance. God of community, we remember events that brought us together, barbecues, trips to church, border parties, tea parties, outreach activities, Christmas parties and dinners, interclubbing, spirit week activities, and many more. And for the gifts of friendship and fellowship, we say, we thank you, Lord. And in this time of memory, we take special note of this rock, God of creation. We give great thanks and praise for many weeks spent here. We are grateful for the environs, the view overlooking the sea, the beautiful sunsets, the chirping birds, and the rustling of the wind. We thank you, Lord. God of the present, Today, we remember the work and witness of Westwood High School. For 140 years of ministry to and with this community. For 140 years of maintaining high standards of education and its noble traditions in the development of young ladies who have become good citizens of Jamaica and the world for 140 years of working together in sisterhood and for all that has made us what we are now. We thank you, Lord. Above all, we give our thanks for the great mercies and promises given to us in Christ Jesus our Lord. To him be praise and glory. With you, O Father and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory, great things he has done. We are grateful that God has given us another opportunity to celebrate. We are elated that you could join us physically and on this platform to celebrate this our 140th anniversary. Special thanks is extended to our guest preacher and chairman, Reverend Curlew, to our old girls who brought greetings, performed and read Honorable Marissa Dalrymple Philibert, Honorable Marsha Smith, Mrs. Doreen Diedrich, President Woga, Ms. Carleen Segree, Regional Director Acting, Ms. Christina Hudson, and Ms. Desiree Mackenzie Ray. We are grateful to Mr. Clayton Hall, our JTA representative, who brought greetings this morning. To our, to our own Mr. Gabidon, our vice principal, who read, to our brothers from Calabar High School and their ushers, who thrilled us with their musical items. We are elated that we had in our presence Mrs. Rochelle Parkinson Henry, who is a former teacher who was our cantor. We are also very happy that we could have had our students with us and a few of our teachers. When we were planning our, our anniversary, we thought it would have been all virtual, but to God be the glory. We have our students and teachers here with us. To Mr. Townsend and the choir, thank you as we, we will still rise to Tiana Brown and Tiana Virgo and Anika Spence, thank you. To the PTA representative, representatives, we appreciate your continued support. Of course, today's production could not have been possible if it were not for Ms. White 
and the technical team led from setup led by Mr. Stanford Brown. To Ms. Johnson and the house mothers, Mrs. Wright, Ms. Mills, and Mrs. Moore for the preparation of the auditorium. To Mr. Taylor for the preparation of the grounds and also the plants. To the members of the hospitality committee, your creativity is well appreciated. And to our ushers, we say a big thank you. We thank all our stakeholders, our, our students, who shared in this service this morning. Last, but definitely not least, to the members of the 140th Anniversary Committee, hats off to you who have planned and executed so very well. I know some are not here today, but you are viewing from home. Indeed, we have demonstrated that we have transformed, that we are resilient, that we have grown, and that we have indeed succeeded. To God be the glory. Thank you. We will all stand, well, we will stand for the singing of the Westwood school song. And then we will end our service with We Build Our School, which will be led by Mrs. Mackenzie Ray. So, Mrs. Wilson, you can stand if you're so led. <laughs> Sitting there upon a hilltop As if it were a tribute to the sun Oh, Alma Mater, you have got to build up The careers of a thousand little ones Westwood, Westwood You have to develop our attitude Alma Mater, you have our gratitude Discipline we practice here at Westwood will stay with us as long as we will strive. It teaches us to live as sisters all should, or a et labore all our lives. Westwood, Westwood, you have to develop our attitude. Alma mater, you have all gratitude.
Receive the benediction. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the partnership of the Holy Spirit, which was with William Menzi Webb, George Henderson, and Alice Townsend, be with all of us now and always. Amen. remain standing assuming the position for the national anthem.
We are grateful that you joined us this morning and we are really, really happy. And we ask that you share with us in our other activities for the rest of the year. Thank you very much for coming.